Yes. Um, so my name is Kirsha Trough, and uh, my talk today is called Building a Chat Ops Framework. Um, a bit about myself. Uh, so my name is Kier. Uh, I work at the developer acceleration team at Shopify. Uh, I'll talk about, uh, more about this team uh, uh, in, my, uh, in my talk. Uh, I live in Canada. It's where Shopify is based. And uh, we may probably have worked together on some open source projects like Rails, Capistrano, uh, Rubybench. And that's me with the uh, cat. Uh, so let's start with chat ops. Uh, please raise your hand if you heard about that. Cool. Um, so with chat ops, you can move your technical and business operations into chat, uh, into a conversation with your team. And uh, this uh, term was first introduced by GitHub. Um, and they, f they first started to talk about that on conferences. Um, they first made a chat ops framework. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it also uh, connected to a term uh, conversation driven development. Uh, as you probably heard, there is test driven development, behavior driven development, and many other kind of driven developments. And uh, with chat ops and conversation driven development, uh, you can bring all of that into a chat with uh, your team. Uh, and uh, a bit about Shopify. Uh, we have quite a lot of developers, uh, more than 300. Um, yeah, so if you don't know about Shopify, it's an e-commerce platform for small and medium business. And uh, when you have so many developers, uh, you need to build uh, tools for those developers so the developers could be productive. And uh, my team, uh, where I work, is called Developer Acceleration, and we build tools for uh, internal tools for our developers uh, to make their uh, productivity better. And chat ops uh, uh, and uh, all that kind of automation uh, is one of the things uh, that uh, Developer Acceleration team uh, is working on. Uh, so for you to have a better idea how uh, all of that looks, let's start with, uh, with an example. Um, so in Shopify, uh, every developer is responsible for uh, shipping uh, his or her own features. Uh, that means uh, we don't have any kind of release engineers who push uh, comments of other people. Uh, so if you made a feature, you're responsible to deploy this feature to see uh, that it works, and it doesn't, if it doesn't work, to roll it back or do something about that. Uh, so imagine uh, you made a pull request. Uh, you're about to merge it. Uh, you merge it if everything is okay with the, with the CI. And uh, in a few minutes, uh, you get a message um, from a chatbot that uh, your, uh, your feature, your commit uh, in the master branch is ready to be shipped. And you tell about, OK, uh, let's ship it. And uh, in, the, in the group channel in Slack, uh, we use Slack, um, everyone will see that you are deploying something, what comments do you deploy, and also the result of this deployment. So it's usually. Uh, it's usually succeeded, but it can also fail, like on, on this slide. Uh, and this is how deploy works. So right after the deploy, uh, or, or after you committed something, uh, sometimes it happens that uh, we have an accident. Uh, for instance, if uh, sign up is down, for example, uh, someone comes to this, the, the same chat and uh, starts uh, an incident. Uh, an incident is a special procedure to um, uh, to manage some kind of uh, 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 bad thing that happens in production, uh, and in, it includes actions like updating uh, status web page and uh, investigating what's wrong. And we also have a chat command for all of that. Um, another example is uh, monitoring the most uh, uh, the most heavy SQL queries 
or the most heavy customers who who uh, who bring a lot of load on our service. And uh, another example of automation uh, is creating uh, new repositories. Uh, so if you work in a small company, in small team, uh, you probably have a CTO or someone who is admin uh, in your GitHub organization who can create uh, a new repo for you. But if you have hundreds of people, um, there is no, there can be no special person who uh, who has uh, a responsibility to create a new repos for someone. And uh, another aspect is that as a developer, you don't even know who to ask to create a repo for you. Uh, we have special uh, events uh, called Hack Days, uh, where we have a lot of internal hackathons at Shopify. And on these days, we create a, a hundred new repositories during a couple of days. So this is an action that should be automated as well. And uh, um, speaking about chat ops, it's all about, uh, it's also about the interface. Um, if we would, to, if we would take another, uh, another path, we would probably create a, a web interface in Bootstrap or, um, or something else, uh, and uh, to give developers uh, all actions, uh, all to give developers ability to trigger all those actions and script uh, that automated. Uh, but with chat ops, it's just another interface, which is chat, uh, which has a lot of advantages. Uh, for example, your team. Uh, We'll, we'll see what's happening and what actions are you taking to do something. Now we come to uh, the next part of my talk, uh, which is about frameworks, about chat ops frameworks that exist and about our own kind of framework uh, that uh, we wrote and uh, reasons why we wrote it. The, the first, framework is called Hubot. It's the framework invented by GitHub uh, that I mentioned. Um, Hubot um, is written in uh, CoffeeScript, uh, which means it's in JavaScript, uh, in Node.js. And uh, as a Ruby developer, you're probably, uh, maybe some of you don't like JavaScript, uh, and there are many Ruby developers who don't like JavaScript. But in case of chat ops framework, uh, JavaScript may be a good thing because it brings uh, uh, a lot of asynchronous support to your code, uh, which is important in case of uh, chat ops framework because comments have to be asynchronous. And one heavy comment uh, shouldn't block comments from, uh, from uh, other people. Uh, another framework is called Lita. It's written in Ruby and it's very well extendable. Uh, it's a few years old, a uh, very good framework, and it's fair to mention uh, that uh, both of these frameworks have different adapters to every chat provider. Um, we use Slack, so uh, Slack is the, uh, the only adapter we use, but if you use some very uh, rare uh, uh, chat solution, uh, you can uh, you can find existing adapter or write your own adapter. So let's see how um, how uh, chat uh, scripts uh, and how DSL uh, looks like. Uh, so th this is the little DSL. Uh, you just define a, a, s a small uh, Ruby class uh, which has a macro called root. Uh, in this macro, you describe a regular expression with uh, the comment that you would like to trigger. Uh, so with uh, this handler, if I go to Slack and write echo something, the bot will, uh, will catch this uh, phrase and uh, reply with uh, the second word that comes after echo. And the, the, the who bot syntax uh, is, very, is very similar to Lita. You also define the the regular expression that uh, the bot should uh, uh, should wait for and uh, send the reply. Now, if we take uh, 
a closer look, we will see that uh, both of these DSLs are based uh, on regular expressions. And uh, you should write a regular expression uh, to uh, tell the bot what comments to detect. And uh, why regular expressions? Um, it is the, the, the easiest way to uh, tell the bot uh, what comment uh, to watch. And uh, uh, this approach have uh, a few uh, disadvantages. Like um, it cannot detect uh, typos. Uh, it cannot um, uh, s uh, reply with, uh, uh, this comment was not found, maybe meant something else. Uh, it, can also, it also cannot do uh, in input validation. Like if the comment was, uh, uh, was right, but the argument uh, was, was wrong. And that argument may have not matched uh, by the regular expression, and this comment won't be found. And um, uh, having regular expressions in your uh, chatbot uh, means that uh, all developers uh, should, uh, should be really good in regular expressions. And it's always easy to make a mistake and find a regular expression that will uh, conflict with the different uh, script regular expression. Uh, so uh, we, we thought that maybe uh, we could do something else without regular expressions. And uh, yeah, here is an example. Uh, uh, the, the first uh, option uh, uh, to write the common syntax with a regular expression, and the second one is to write it with uh, some kind of uh, uh, pattern language. And uh, with echo, uh, the difference is not that big, but with a bigger comment like GitHub add user name to team name, uh, the regular expression becomes uh, quite long, and it's quite easy to make a, a, a mistake there, as I said. Uh, so we, we thought that maybe we can improve that, um, that experience of writing chat uh, handlers. And uh, what we wanted to, uh, to have from that solution. We want to be uh, friendly for both developers and the user. Uh, by uh, being friendly for a developer, it means that developer wouldn't need to write a regular expression. And friendly for user means that we would suggest the right comment if a user made a mistake. Um, we're also, uh, we also have a lot of uh, Ruby uh, co infrastructure code written in Ruby at Shopify. So we, we decided that uh, we want to stick with Ruby. Uh, after we tried both uh, Lita and Hubot uh, in production. And we wanted simpler and more powerful DSL um, that would provide uh, better argument support. Uh, so our solution, uh, we, we decided to, to make it on top of Lita uh, with a custom command router and custom DSL. And uh, this is how this uh, DSL looks like. Um, first of all, it's very similar to Lita, uh, but instead of defining the regular expression, uh, uh, here you define a special uh, pattern. And you also define a help. And uh, right after this pattern is matched, it's dispatched to a Ruby method with a keyword argument. Uh, and in this case, it's very simple handler. It will reply with the same command. Um, so let's take a look on a, a bit more complex handler. It has uh, two arguments. Uh, one of them is, uh, yeah, this handler is for displaying uh, some chart from your lake. Uh, the first uh, variable is application name, and the second is format. A format uh, is a enum field. Uh, it can detect uh, daily or hourly value and help, and uh, it should be uh, converted into a calling of a Ruby method, which is kind of uh, simple. Uh, so this uh, pattern would match uh, all the following uh, user inputs can be my app. Uh, so hourly is the, the default value for the format uh, variable. Uh, you can override it here and here, and uh, you can also define it in the explicit way, uh, which is uh, useful when you have 
uh, more arguments. And maybe you don't remember the order of them. Uh, so we also wanted to have the explicit format. Um, and uh, we, to be able to work without regular expressions, we, we tokenize this pattern uh, with uh, different kind of tokens. Uh, first, our two are static tokens. So uh, the user input should start with a neural egg and chart. And then there is a, a simple variable, and then there is a variable with default. Uh, it looks like this. So uh, th this comment uh, consists of uh, four tokens. Um, our next uh, goal is to convert uh, the user input of neural egg chart my app daily into calling uh, a Ruby method. Actually, yeah, instantiating the URL handler and calling uh, that method with uh, those keyword arguments. And uh, this may seem as a uh, as a task uh, as a difficult task until we discovered uh, the class uh, in Ruby standard library, which is called String Scanner. Uh, yeah, it's a class in the Ruby standard library. Please raise your hand if you heard about that class. Yeah, so not too many people. <laughs> um, so string scanner works as a scanner. I'll have an example now. Uh, so you uh, initiate an object uh, with, uh, with a string. In this case, string is the user input. And uh, you, there is a method called scan. And you give just a, uh, just the, the token uh, to that scan command, and uh, yeah, so it scans. And uh, if this user input would start from something else, uh, it wouldn't sc uh, scan uh, the, the string at all. So if it would start with the GitHub or some other uh, command, it, it wouldn't be scanned. Uh, then we have the next token, which is chart, a static token. Uh, it is also scanned, so we can go further. Uh, then we scan uh, for a variable. Uh, uh, so that, that uh, it's scanned. Uh, and then the next variable. And we get uh, the, uh, the values. Uh, for those variables. Uh, so it wouldn't be honest, uh, so it's not very honest to, to uh, say that we completely got rid of uh, regular expressions, but the end developer of, uh, uh, of a handler doesn't have to write a regular expression, but we, we use some regular expressions under the hood. Yeah, so more than that, we have uh, uh, type coercion. Um, so when defining a handler, uh, you, can, uh, 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 you can declare the type of variable. Uh, for instance, the target, uh, this is the comment used to uh, tell to the infrastructure that some server will go to downtime. Uh, that means that maybe we'll, we are going to restart the server or uh, repair it somehow. And uh, there are two uh, arguments. One of them is a target, uh, which is a, a chef node. It should be a valid chef, a chef node address. And then duration. Duration uh, can be uh, uh, one minute or one second or one hour uh, or just any duration. And we also declare that. Uh, so the first one is types chef node, second types duration. And uh, when the Ruby method receives, uh, so when we call this Ruby method, inside this method, you'll have uh, duration as uh, active support duration. And uh, target will be a valid chef node. So we can be sure in this method that both of these arguments are, are valid. Uh, so this comment will uh, will be valid for the first input, but for the second input, uh, it won't be valid, and it will uh, return an error, and uh, this uh, this method won't be called at all. 
So when writing code in that method, you will be sure that uh, you get the, the right input. Um, after shipping um, this DSL to our developers, uh, many developers uh, could, uh, uh, could write their own chat handlers to automate their, their workflows. And we, we got to the number of more than 200 boss scripts uh, handlers and uh, more than uh, 60, uh, more than 600 uh, common invocations uh, on a busy day in, in Slack. So this became uh, a, a part of infrastructure that we had to scale. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we based our framework on, uh, on Lita. Uh, so it, it was just the, the next um, on top of Lita, and uh, that, that means so Lita is written in Ruby. That means that it didn't have uh, any support for uh, a synchronous workflow, which meant that if you ask a bot for some command that takes a minute. Uh, it, um, um, working on comments from other users. So the, the bot was blocked for that minute and it couldn't accept uh, comments from uh, other users, which was super bad, especially on, uh, in the scale. So we decided that we will, um, uh, as, as one option, we can uh, make a new thread on every comment and do all the operation in that thread to not block uh, receiving new comments from Slack. And um, uh, Ruby threads are not uh, are not so good in some kind of in most kind of operations, but uh, in in our case, when uh, most of the handlers for a chatbot were uh, only making HTTP queries or they were invoking uh, some other kinds of systems, uh, they didn't they didn't do any calculations on the bot side, so they just requested uh, data from other systems. So in this case, Ruby threads uh, were, were quite efficient. And uh, this approach helped. Um, but we, we thought that maybe uh, there is some other approach. And we, we went uh, with, uh, uh, with the master process and Redis. And when the master process received a comment from Slack, uh, it pushed that comment to Redis. And we had a pool of workers. And we could have uh, multiple machines that are that work as workers, uh, so we could scale it, scale that horizontally, and it works uh, the same as a, a sidekick or delayed job uh, worker queue. Having that approach, we could have active and passive instances of the bot server running. And Slack would uh, make a, a callback to a load balancer with a message for a bot. And uh, then the load balancer could determine uh, to, which, uh, to which machine uh, to, uh, to route the, the message. And that comes to uh, the availability problem. Uh, so if you remember, uh, in, at the beginning of this year, GitHub was down for um, like four uh, three or four hours. Um, that was a pretty uh, big downtime. And uh, one of the reasons for, uh, for that such a long downtime was that uh, GitHub uh, is heavily based on, uh, uh, on their chat ops scripts. And, uh, but, but chat ops was down as well because of some network failure. So they, they couldn't use any of the chat ops scripts to recover the system because chat up setup was down as well. And we know that problem at Shopify, we, we also had this problem when our bot was unavailable or Slack was down. And in this case, we, we couldn't do anything. Uh, so we decided that we will build a, a special offline uh, or rescue mode in our bot. Uh, so you should be, if you have uh, this bot locally on your uh, laptop, uh, you just I launch it with a special bean command, and you will have uh, exactly the same interface 
in your command line as you would have interface for a bot in chat. Uh, but it works even if Slack or uh, something else is down. Um, summary. Um, this is very important. So probably you, you learned a bit about chat ops and how it can automate things. And you thought, OK, cool. Uh, I'm going to try that in my team, in my company. No, but uh, I would like to say that it's, it only makes sense when, uh, if you have a very big team. Uh, because when I worked uh, on, uh, uh, in smaller teams and smaller companies, uh, I would say that we didn't need all of that, just because uh, we, uh, it wasn't on such scale that, that we needed to automate things with, uh, with chat ops. And in this case, it's really easier to come to your CTO and ask uh, to create a new repo for you instead of uh, uh, bringing more code and more infrastructure to keep uh, the chat ops running. So if you're interested uh, in working on such a big scale uh, systems, you're welcome to check Shopify careers. And um, I had, I have mentioned a lot of uh, projects uh, in Ruby, a lot of gems and uh, some other things. So you can go to my Twitter. And the last tweet uh, is a gist with, uh, with all links that I mentioned today, uh, which you're welcome to check. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kia. Uh, any questions for him? How many of you use uh, uh, some form of bots on your favorite tool? Cool. Uh, my favorite Slack bot is the flip table bot. So whatever you type in, it inverts it with a raging guy. <laughs> so uh, if there are no questions for Akia, uh, round of applause again for him, please. Thank you.